Alright guys, how's it going? I said I'd be back with anything interesting while I work on a different project, so how about a shorter video about some Zen 5 leaks? Starting off with a YouTube video and a place where nerds were talking to nerds about Risk 5. Amongst those nerds were none other than Jim Keller and Raja Kaduri as well. And for those of you closely following the tech and particularly the artificial intelligence scenes, will instantly realise that this was a Tens Torrent event. Tens Torrent are the company that Raja just left Intel for to join, and Jim Keller here is the CEO of the company. The fun part about these nerds talking to other nerds was, for many, when he showed this slide, which details the scalar competition landscape. It's a slide on a whiteboard taken directly from YouTube, which is why the quality of it is so poor. But we can easily make out scalar competition landscape, spec 2K17 int. So what we're looking at here is one of the main industry standard integer benchmarks. And the major part of the chart shows a bunch of CPUs, including Amazon's Graviton, AMD's Zen, Nvidia's upcoming Grace, which is projected as you can see here, Intel's Xeon that should be, and Sapphire Rapids down the bottom. But the one which really caught the eye of the tech enthusiast crowd was of course this long green winning bar labelled AMD Zen 5. Now, obviously Zen 5 hasn't released yet, so this has to be a projection of sorts, even though it wasn't tagged as one. Unlike Nvidia's Grace here, and also Amazon's Graviton 3, which is noted as projected over at the right here. Now, Jim Keller left AMD in 2015, which was 18 months before Zen 1 launched, so he clearly did not work on Zen 5. It is possible that Jim got hold of a spec benchmark of Zen 5 recently. However, if you divide this 8.84 by the Genoa Bergamo numbers of 6.8, you get exactly 30%. And that's just a little bit more coincidence than I am willing to believe. So for me, it's much more likely that Jim doesn't have this benchmark of spec 2K17 in, and so therefore he's either guessing, or much more likely he was told by someone. Raja Kaduri isn't the only person to have joined Tens Torrent recently. There are some more ex-AMD people there too, and it's also highly likely that Jim has kept pretty close contact with many people at AMD who are directly involved with Zen 5. And so for me, it's no stretch whatsoever to assume that getting accurate info on Zen 5 isn't much of a challenge for somebody like Jim. Regarding the guesswork, how likely is that really? Why would anyone guess at a 30% improvement? However, in saying that, Rome to Milan shows 29.6% improvement, which is pretty close to 30, obviously, but Milan to Genoa was only 15%. However, as you know, the major architectural changes came at Zen 1 and Zen 3, and coming again with Zen 5. And as Milan was Zen 3, and it was almost 30% here, perhaps Jim really was just speculating about Zen 5 being another 30%. But the plot thickens somewhat because over at the right, this frequency graph, you can see that Zen 5 just about breaks 4 GHz. So clearly we're talking about epic data center chips here. But why would you even include Zen 5 in there? And exclude Nvidia's Grace, for example, it's not in there. However, I mean, it might just be an assumption based on AMD's historical frequency increases. So is there anything at all to get excited about here? There's so many ifs and buts and we have no way of telling for sure if this is just pure guesswork or insider info. But if you want one last thing to ponder about this leak or whatever it is, the old video has now been made private. And they actually uploaded this new video a few days later, which included an updated and obviously much more readable slide here, which now shows Zen 5 as projected on both sides. There could be any number of reasons for that. Maybe AMD asked Jim to, you know, update the slide as a projection. Maybe he read all the hullabaloo and decided to do that himself. But whatever the reasons for it, it'll add fuel to the fire for some people. 
Next up was a rather amusing leak by Tom over at Moore's Law is Dead. I say amusing because I got the exact same info and I was trying to figure out what it all meant on Twitter literally one hour before Tom uploaded his video. The leak was of an AMD engineering sample, which is obviously Turin Zen 5 Cinebench R23 score, which came in at around about 124,000 points. Compared to the Cinebench world record of 132,484, which was with a Xeon W93495X, that is the 56 core Sapphire Rapids SP CPU. It obviously gets really close to that result. The Intel CPU is, of course, very highly overclocked to 5.5 GHz, I think it was, on liquid nitrogen, <laughs> which draws nearly 1900 watts of power. Now, the Turin CPUs appear to be twin 64 core 128 threads, we think, running slightly higher clock speeds we can see here of 3.85 gigahertz, that's compared to the previous generation 3.7, 3.6, and this already was a huge surprise to me, because it would seem that AMD has got Turin back from TSMC's 4 nanometer fab in great condition very early. And this is probably A0 silicon, and it might even already be ready for high volume manufacturing. If that is the case, there's a very strong chance of seeing Ryzen 9000 series before the end of this year. And that's simply because Ryzen always launches first because the new architectures need to be validated for the data center. But the issue that I was having was how does Cinebench R23 work with these extremely high thread counts? And also, while this circa 124,000 score looks very impressive when you compare it to the LN2 world record, it doesn't actually compare particularly well against previous AMD chips. For example, the current generation Genoa Epic 9654, that sits seventh on the list and it's clocked at 3.7 GHz and scores 108,313 Cinebench points. And this is two 96 core chips. But above that, there's a previous generation Milan Epic 7763, which scores 113,566 Cinebench points. And that was clocked at 3.6 GHz. And that's dual 64 core chips. And I mean, we know that Genoa is quite a bit faster than Milan but it isn't in this benchmark. So as I said, I spent some time on Twitter trying to figure it all out. It appears to be something to do with the limits of Cinebench, which only uses 256 threads. According to Ian Cutris, it grabs the first 256 threads and simply doesn't see the rest. And below that, we actually see one possible issue here, which I was also concerned about. In this case, disabling SMT to expose all 256 threads really, would be better than only being able to use 128 cores, 256 threads, because obviously cores are better than hyperthreads. And we just don't know how any of these CPUs have been set up, either this new Turin benchmark or even these Cinebench results for both Genoa and Milan when these record attempts were made. What's interesting here though is that Ian actually benchmarked Genoa back in November and he scored about 94,000 best result. And so if we're looking at the same situation here as what Ian pointed out, that basically for this leaked Turin benchmark, I think it seems more likely that AMD disabling SMT etc on Turin for this benchmark is pretty unlikely. And they basically just let the operating system grab the first 256 threads. If that is the case, then it means that this leaked Turin CPU, Zen 5, is already about 32% ahead of Genoa at the same thread count. <laughs> and 32% is obviously quite close to what Jim Keller's leaked slide suggested. And what's more, we now have one claim of 30% faster in integer and another benchmark showing possibly 32% faster in floating point. There are a few caveats though. Clock speeds are slightly higher on Turin, as I said. So again, it is just 
too difficult to tell right now. But what I can tell you though is that from the other info I got while I also received this benchmark is that AMD are really excited about Zen 5. Tom talked about other info as well including a larger L1 cache size among others but if you want you can check out his video for that. Now next up is what I believe is new exclusive information about Zen 5. If you remember back to Zen 1, it was an 8 core chiplet, but was set up as two of these 4 core complexes. In a way it was two 4 core CPUs with 8 megabyte of L3, which communicated with each other through a crossbar, and that's what kind of led to the issues with latency and loads which went over these 4 cores on each CCX. Zen 2 was a similar story, except that L3 had doubled to 16 megabyte per CCX, but each of the CCXs still communicated through the crossbar. It wasn't until Zen 3 that the entire problem was solved and the CCX was now a true 8 core CPU. And the way that AMD achieved this was by moving from the old crossbar to what's called a bi-directional ring bus. Now I've talked about communication in a couple of videos some Intel, some AMD, most notably probably is this one, my best one, the Interposers Chiplets and Butter Donuts video from four years ago, where I talked about essentially as the core count increases, the links between the cores need to increase or you end up bottlenecked by, well, communication bottlenecks. This ring bus idea is pretty old in fact. Intel used it back previous to Skylake I think and then moved on to a mesh topology when they increased the core count for server CPUs, Skylake SP I think it was, and this was all just about preventing communication bottlenecks as the core counts increase. And you'll know that in previous videos I noted that I expected AMD to increase the Zen 5 CCX to 16 cores. They are doing that, but they're only doing it with the Zen 5 C core, or Turin Dense. However, I can now exclusively reveal that both Zen 5 and Zen 5 Dense, with their 8 core and 16 core complexes respectively, will introduce what AMD is calling a ladder L3 fabric. And the name pretty much gives it away. It's basically just going to be like a ladder here instead of the ring bus. And it should be fairly obvious just looking at this thing that I drew up here that communication bottlenecks between the cores will be drastically reduced. And what is interesting though is that AMD feels at least that this setup is going to work better for 8 cores as well as 16 cores. And as you know I am reasonably expecting this as a minimum for Zen 6. So look out for this when the Zen 5 slides start leaking out, this ladder L3 fabric. It probably won't look exactly like this on AMD's slides, but I don't think it'll be too far off. Now, the last leak today is one that I got a bit overexcited by, I think, only to be brought back to earth by one of my most trusted leakers. AMD has CPUs in their labs with 2 megabyte and 3 megabytes of L2 cache per core. And if you recall, Zen 4 has just doubled the L2 from 512 kilobytes up to 1 megabyte. Well, now I can exclusively reveal they have working chips with as much as 3 megabytes of L2 per core. This is pretty new information and it's a bit scarce right now. And I don't know if these chips are based on Zen 5 or earlier architectures. What I can tell you is that the impact of increasing L2 on these test chips is around 4% with 2 megabyte and 7% with 3 megabyte. That is IPC. Before you get too excited, that is for multi-threaded loads. Single thread doesn't get anywhere near that size of increase. In fact, it's just about 1%. Which makes perfect sense when you think about it because a single thread rarely would require that amount of cache access. But what was even more interesting here was the latency didn't increase as the L2 size did. So no latency increase going from 1 to 2 to 3 megabytes. But whether or not we see 2 megabyte and 3 megabyte of L2 cache per core with Zen 5 that's anyone's guess just now, but 
it seems sure that this will be coming sooner rather than later. And with that, it seems clear enough that AMD have found yet another lever to pull regarding IPC as their unrelenting gains generation after generation show no signs of letting up. The most interesting part of this for me though is that they've actually got these chips because this is money spent on pure research and development basically. Three years ago they didn't have enough money to do this kind of R&D, but now they do. And if you think about it, each of these chips requires design, they require production masks and tape outs, probably running close to $100 million a piece. Which is also why I'm thinking they probably use Zen 4 for these, but again that is just a guess. Whether or not Zen 5 ends up having these 2 and 3 megabyte L2 options, it's still looking really good. It's probably going to be the biggest jump since Zen 1, which is what, what did they get, 59% IPC, something like that? <laughs> that was over Bulldozer, which was complete crap, remember? But it might have to be really something to stay in the lead, because we've just recently learned that Intel's Meteor Lake, and presumably Arrow Lake, has a new adamantium L4 cache. I'm sure you remember my video where I talked about ADM and well now we know what ADM stands for. It's obviously been adamantium. And during this video I believed that it was additional GPU cache. It could be a shared cache between the CPU and GPU which would be pretty interesting. And apparently it's on the base die. There's another leak showing this ADM base or passive interposer which we know is it gonna basically house all of those Meteor Lake and Arrow Lake chiplets. Now I don't know but that base die looks pretty large and if this is filled with L4 cache then this could be a very interesting product and it does go a long way to explaining why we've seen the previous Meteor Lake leaks which are predicting 20% IPC gains. But for me Zen 5 looks like a 20% plus IPC gain and that's without vCache and that's without the L2 cache increases which I just mentioned and this is on TSMC 4 nanometers, not TSMC 3 nanometers. This is still with the 8 core CCX and it seems sure that they'll have a 16 core CCX as standard with the Zen 6. It seems that no matter what Intel does, AMD are a step ahead and still holding performance back for when they really need it. And I'm somebody who has followed CPU development for nearly 30 years now. It is insane for me to see how this has turned around. I remember when Intel were sandbagging on core count, 6 cores for $1000 because their 4 core CPUs easily beat AMD's awful phenoms and bulldozer. Well, it is a complete 180 today and if anything AMD might be pulling even further ahead with each generation. I'll catch you later guys.